Good evening, everybody. Let me just get some lights uh, switched on here. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome Niku, welcome Stamp VFX, how's it going guys, how's everyone doing tonight? <coughs> um, just let me know if everything is coming through okay, sound, music, everything good. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to model a starship a SpaceX Starship. Um, so, if anyone wants to follow along, what you can do, let me just open my browser here quickly. Alright, so um, there's actually a very nice reference document on the SpaceX website. Uh, I'm just going to put the music slightly lower. Maybe, maybe just let me set it in Spotify. Yeah, maybe like that. So yeah, if you go to the SpaceX uh, website and you go to spacex.com forward slash vehicles forward slash Starship. Uh, there's actually a link in the description of the video, so you can just go there and uh, yeah, just click on the link. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see all these nice little graphics. Nice Raptor engines. And then right at the bottom, there's Download User's Guide, which is basically like a, a nice little PDF document with some stats and specs and all cool stuff. Um, about the SpaceX Starship um, and what I did I actually just saved these two images so I saved them and I'm gonna use them in blender for my as my reference images so yeah if you want to follow along download that mr. Martin Fenter welcome 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 so yeah, just download that image and um, then you can basically use that as a reference image. Is anyone following, following along tonight? All right, let's get into it. So I'm gonna jump straight into Blender. All right, brand new scene. I'm going to delete everything as you usually do. <clears throat> and uh, let me just position everything here a little bit nicer. Cool, so I'm basically just going to drag in my reference image and I'm just going to center it out. Now, I don't think I'm going to go for scale or to actually model um, to scale. I think I'm just going to just model and see what happens. No idea what's going to happen. Let's see. All right. So, uh, first of all, I just want to rotate my reference image 90 degrees like so. And um, I think let's scale it up a little bit. Maybe, yeah, something like that. Um, I'm going to use the one on the left hand side as my reference. So I'm just going to slide it over. And I'm just kind of looking at the top there to line it up with that axis, axis line. Axis line. the music um, not too loud is it okay like this so what you can do on your reference image if you go to your uh, reference image properties I'm just gonna tick opacity and then I'm gonna bring down the opacity maybe to around 0 0.4 so I can kind of see my stuff behind it just like that and I'm viewing it obviously from the 
front. Alright, so yeah, let's start. I'm just going to save this. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start with a circle. Just a normal circle like that. Um, and I think that's going to be the easiest just to extrude the body of the starship. So first of all, let's just scale it up and uh, it's almost perfect scale, but obviously not completely. So I'm going to go into edit mode on that circle and I'm just going to select all these vertices and I'm going to scale it up. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it up and see, scale it up. And I'll probably use the right hand side to check it because I'm going to mirror this anyways. So I'm just going to scale it up like that and then I'm going to move it all the way down. back to the ground whoops ah, I'm just gonna eyeball it not snapping or anything at the moment just putting it right there so everything's still looking good so now I just want to enable my mirroring mirroring so I'm gonna select that object I'm gonna press N and then go to my edit menu on the side auto mirror and I want to mirror across the X axis. Let's see if that's going to work. Cool. So our circle is still still alive. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically extrude this. So just extrude this straight up and we shoot. Hmm. Mm, okay, so my x-ray wasn't on, so that's why it's only doing the front. So I'm just going to undo that quickly. Um, make sure your x-ray is turned on so you can actually select the, the vertices behind these ones. So let's extrude that again and just move it straight up. And now we should, if I switch off x-ray, we should have a nice little cylinder. Cool, music all right. Uh, did you try Pure Ref before? No, I haven't. Is that actually a plugin for using references? It's probably something like that. Um, I usually just import a, like a JPEG or a PNG and just use it as a reference. Um, yeah, but I'm sure there's some 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 handy plugins that one can can actually download as well so i think let's uh move this up to around here and um then what i want to do is i just want to extrude this all the way like so and um then i'm going to scale this in and there's actually a a new shortcut that I learned like yesterday. So if you try and scale something like this, like these vertices, you will think if you look at this from the side and you would think if, if I'm going to scale this in, it's actually going to kind of make a point, but it doesn't work like that. Like check if I try and scale this down. So S and if I scale this down, it kind of does it like that because we've got mirroring on, it's kind of scaling it on the one side, which is a bit of a problem. But to fix that, you use instead of S, whoops, instead of S, you're going to use Alt S. So if I press Alt S, you'll see that it's going to kind of expand and shrink. So yeah, that's a new little, little handy shortcut that I, that I learned yesterday. So let's do that. And then I'm going to obviously add some loop cuts loop cuts loop cuts loop cuts maybe let's add one two three for now and then the same thing with these ones so make sure you select all of them Ooh, do i have x-ray on now i do so select all those vertices and then alt s to kind of expand them out like so hope this is gonna work so just like that looks like it same with these ones, Alt-S, and then scale them out. 
like so. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's working. So X-ray is on again. Sorry, I'm moving a bit slow, but yeah, that's just how it is. So I think let's add one or two more uh, loop cuts. Maybe let's add one there, scale it up, just like so. And then one more right there, Alt-S and scale it up. That looks pretty cool. That one's good. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do at the top yet. I'm just gonna leave it open for now. We'll see what happens. Um, I should actually align these with these little windows. Um, maybe not. But maybe just let's align these ones that I do have. So, like so. Uh, this one we can maybe align with that. I don't know if it's actually Windows. It's probably Windows. Probably. Did anyone check the Starship launch? When was it? Yesterday? No, it was Wednesday, Wednesday night or was it last night? I can't remember. But it was amazing. Starship uh, SN10 that did a kinda um, successful land. It was a bit of a bit of a bounce, and then 20 minutes later it exploded. But that's pretty successful, I would say, for a brand new concept that's gonna take us to Mars. So that's pretty cool. Okay. I'm not going to line them up with the windows. Maybe we can add more um, loops later on. So I just want to add one loop here where the, these flaps are going to start. What do you call? I think they just call flaps. I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably going to say some very interesting technical things tonight. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. It's a really easy like shape. Um, that's the cool thing about this Starship, but it looks so cool. And obviously if you look at the um, the images on, let me just go back to Safari. Safari, there we go. Um, so yeah, you can look at the, the kind of textures you can use. So if we look at, let's go down. Yeah, here's a nice one. Um, nice and chrome or it's actually stainless steel so that's pretty cool and then there you can see there's all the windows and the lights coming through from the inside oh, it looks so freaking cool and here's a nice little render of starship on the moon um pretty cool like it's gonna have this it looks like a sort of an elevator type of thing that's can lower the cargo to the to the surface of the moon very nice Okay, let's go back to the blend. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that, Niku. Can it? Can it? I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> Is that what you call the the little fins, the flaps, the fins, whatever? Um, okay. Anyway, so we've got the basic shape now. That was not too difficult. I'm gonna switch that. Off. I'm just gonna hide my reference quickly. Maybe we should just try and close this this top. Mm, it's a bit of a weird weird vertice there. That's interesting. That's probably part of the scaling. Um, yeah, not really gonna worry about that for now. So I think let's see if we can just extrude this and then scale. Mm, you see, that's gonna it's gonna do something weird. I wonder if I can just move this over. Oops. Uh, if we do X-ray, go inside. Uh, I'm just going to move all these to the middle. And then we can select all of those and maybe just pull it out a little bit. A little, like so. Probably not the best geometry to do to do something like this. Um, I wonder if we can make another loop here. 
Mm. Maybe. Let's delete this. Mm. Let's delete that middle vertice. And see if we can fill it rather than just have a little point. So I'm going to delete that. And go back into solid. Okay, we in x-ray view. Um, mm. Let's see if we can fill this. Fill, grid fill. Nah. Because it's um, because we've got a mirror going on here, you can't can't use that. So extrude scale zero. Let's just do that. And I'm gonna select that vertice and scale it right there. Alrighty then. There's our starship done. <laughs> okay, let's bring our reference image back. I'm just going to save that. So now it's time to start with maybe one of these fins. Let's do the top one first. So for this, I'm going to go from the side view. And then we just need to decide what faces we're going to select here. Maybe I must do one more loop cut. Just kind of somewhere there. Just so we have something below where we're gonna cut. So it's probably from around here to, see it goes all the way to the top. Um, <laughs> so maybe if I select all those ones and see what happens. So let's just make sure that's, okay, so we can't just select the one side because that's gonna be kind of off center. So I'm gonna select these ones too. So we have like a double, a double line of faces. Time for some water. All right, so let's see what's gonna happen. I've got no idea. So we're just gonna extrude it. I think that's probably gonna be the easiest thing to do. Let's go X-ray, make sure we did extrude all of that, yeah. So vertex selection, and now I'm just gonna start moving these points in. Um, I don't know, this might not work but we'll probably find out soon enough so I'm just gonna literally just selecting those vertices G to grab and I'm just moving them moving them around where I want them and this one can probably just go there let's see what we have yeah it's, it's kind of the ideas there we're obviously gonna make it a bit thinner Thinner, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Reference image and save. <laughs> uh, maybe let's do the bottom one first before we try and scale scale that one down to make it thinner. Yeah, let's add the bottom one first. Um, so same thing here. So I'm gonna put one more loop cut right at the bottom maybe yeah just there then we can extrude that whole thing and add well i'm gonna add some more loop cuts right now so uh let me just go into the front view again and let's add one right there just where we have that kind of that curve in that um, flap i'm not gonna say that other word sorry and then i'm gonna place one right there and then maybe one year at the bottom so we have something that's lining up with that point right there so everything's working and uh, now we're going to go into the side view again so we're going to select faces from around there all the way to that small one there so that should should do it so side view and we're just going to extrude them as well so e and we just pull them out to probably around there yep and we're gonna switch on x-ray mode again and then we just grab the vertices again and start moving them around so these two at the bottom I'm just gonna eh, just do that maybe that one there place that one there and this one we can just pull in 
and this one we can pull in all the way just try not to let them overlap anything whoops so front and I'm just gonna line them up something like that let's see what we have how's everyone doing it's Friday it's weekend how's the week so lights pretty bright um, anyways <laughs> all right so we've got our basic shape so as you can see these fins or these little flaps they a little fat so I'm just gonna shrink them down quickly so I think the easiest way to do this will just select what's happening here at the top this looks a little bit worrying you see this is now where it kind of connects with the with the top of the starship so I wonder if that's going to cause a problem because we've got some new uh, edges going to the top. <laughs> nah, I'm just going to leave it and see. I'm maybe just going to scale these two out slightly. So if I select these two vertices and just scale them, maybe just scale Y so they kind of line up with the thickness of this side. So now what I need to do, I need to select all these vertices all the way to there. And then I'm going to select this side as well, holding control to select everything in that in that row. And now we can probably just scale in the Y axis to, <clears throat> to thin, it, thin it out a bit. So you see there's a bit of a problem happening there at the bottom. Uh, this vertice right here these two they I don't know if it's gonna cause a problem with a body but you know what I don't know let's just try it so I'm gonna scale them in um, maybe let's just undo that I just want to see how far I'm gonna scale them in so scale Y and we're gonna scale them to about 0 0.3 0 0.3 so we can do the same with the with the bottom one yeah looks alright Okay, so let's do this one. So we're going to take all those vertices uh, all the way to the hair and then all the way to the bottom. And then this side, we're going to select those ones all the way to the top, like so. And then we're going to scale it in the Y axis and we're going to do 0 0.3 to just match the top one. Cool, so we have the basic, basic, basic shape going. We did close the top, eh? Yeah, little flat, flat top. Maybe we must just pull this one vertice out slightly. Oops, that's a bit close. So I'm just gonna uh, enable X-ray mode again. And then just GZ, just to make a little, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit much. Something like that. <clears throat> okay, so switch off X ray, switch off the empty. We can probably just right click and say shade smooth to get a kind of smooth look but that does not look very nice so let's see what will happen if we add a subdivision uh, subdivision surface modifier so I'm gonna keep the mirror for now let's just see what happens if we do a subdivision surface that might actually work um, now I can obviously smooth it out uh, maybe not yet flat so what I'm going to do with this subdivision surface, so I'm just going to increase the levels in the viewport to maybe two, that should be fine. Um, we have about 9,000 faces currently, so it's not too bad. 
still okay. So now we can start adding some loop cuts just to make this subdivision surface, these corners, a bit tighter. So, <laughs> usually what I will do is I will let's add a loop cut there, and you just kind of oops, you kind of pull them out, and you'll see how that's going to change the shape when you're using a uh, subdivision surface. So I'm just going to pull it out to around there, and then maybe one on the inside as well, because you can see this curve. Uh, it's pretty fat it, or it, it starts like pretty far and then it kind of curves in you want that curve to be almost 90 degrees but just kind of smooth so i'm gonna put a loop cut right in the middle and i'm just gonna pull it in and you'll see now that's how that's gonna change the actual shape of that section which is pretty cool so i'm just gonna push it in the corner there and that's looking better, I think. Mm, 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 mm. And uh, yeah, let's do the same with the bottom. So I'm just gonna add a loop cut right there. Just pull it out to this to the to the edge, and then the same. Pull that into the center. Yeah, that's looking cool see if it's still match if it's still matching our reference image yeah I think um, the bottom fins are a little bit too round you see if I zoom in um, oops. If I, if I zoom in on this section right there, that's a bit too round. So yeah, we will have to do something. So I can probably add a loop cut and then just pull it down. Yeah, there you go. That's probably going to mess up the body of the starship, but let's have a look. So let's switch off this reference. And um, yeah, it's not looking too bad. You'll see some artifacts happening here on the body um, slightly these these lines here but I'm not really gonna worry about it because um, yeah it doesn't doesn't really bother me it's not hectic and the top one is looking pretty smooth <clears throat> I wonder if we must add a loop cut like a, a horizontal loop cut in that one as well thank you thank you Martin Fenter thank you thank you thank you I hope you are following along. I want to see what you're going to do. So, uh, let's add one horizontal loop cut, maybe. Yeah, and then just pull this down just to kind of get that sharp edge right there. And we can probably do one here as well. Let's see how that's going to work. Uh, it looks a, bit, looks a bit weird. Let's just see it from the side. Hmm. Almost feels like these two. Let's go out slightly. Yeah. Let's select these vertices, maybe all three. And then obviously at the back as well. Uh, GX. Whoops. GX. And I'm just going to try and make them a little bit straighter so they align better. Okay. So. Uh, let's save. Smoky time. <clears throat> All right, maybe I'm obviously not gonna do the engines. We can we can do like little fake engines, but I'm not gonna go into the details. Like if you go to this this page, um, da, 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 Safari, then you will see all the amazing photos of these engines. I would love to try and model these things um, one day, one day, one day, one day. There's actually a guy I can't remember his name now on on Twitter that's modeling all these things, um, and it's, he's doing an amazing job. So I think we're just gonna fake some engines at the bottom, just like little cylinders. 
Uh, let's see what else we can do. So I know it's got these small fins at the bottom, you see there, that I probably need to add as well. So it's got the two big fins at the top. Let me just see. Uh, I think I might be missing some, some fins. No, so it's only here you can see it's actually rotating. So here you can see at the bottom it's got these two little fins right there. And I'm sure it's going to have it on the other side as well. Yeah, so it's... I don't know if it's exactly the same. Probably. No, maybe. Maybe not, maybe. So, let's give it a try. Back in the blender. Right, so let's save our project. Is anyone following along? Um, yeah, I've actually created the Discord server for Tunnel Vision TV. So if you guys look in the description of the video, you can find the link to that server. Don't have any members yet, so feel free to join. And then we can maybe share like share stuff there, share Blender files or um, I don't know whatever no idea what i'm gonna do there but i'll probably post some interesting things all right so let's try and add those two little little fins i wonder if we should maybe mm, i'll probably have to apply this mirror now and then change the mirroring so it's mirroring in the y axis because currently it's obviously mirroring across the x axis and that's not really gonna help me um Cool, Martin Fenter. I want to see your starship. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a duplicate of this. So, every time, let me just go to the main chat. So, every time you, you're you working with these modifiers in Blender, um, before you apply them, it's always a very good idea to make a copy of your mesh. Uh, just duplicate it and put it aside and hide it or you can put it in a different collection and just hide it and then always you can go back to that um, that copy if you wanna if something goes wrong and you want to kind of go back to that mirroring and want to change something so yeah all um, it's just a good thing to always do don't just apply your modifiers because down the line you will want to go back and then you can't so do that cool uh nico i'm gonna try and mention the keys i must actually get that uh there's a plugin for blender that actually shows all your key presses on the screen um but i found it's a little buggy when you're using one of these wacom tablets that i'm using um it doesn't always show you like some of the some of the the, the pen kind of keys or the pen buttons um, I think if you're using a normal mouse it works fine but with a Wacom tablet I find it's a bit uh, bit weird but I'll, I'll try and I'll try and say the the key presses okay so let's go back to blender wide cam yeah I think we on the right screen yeah volume is looking good so um, sorry I'm moving really slow tonight it's Friday, it's weekend, no rush. So um, I'm gonna duplicate this, move it off to the side, and uh, I'm just gonna hide that one. So we do have a copy if we wanna go back. So this one, I'm gonna apply my mirroring, mirrors uh, modifier. So just click the drop down and then apply. So now we don't have any mirror on this thing again. Um, so now I'm going to mirror it across the y-axis. You know what? I was stupid. I actually want to... Uh, no, I want to mirror it across the, the y and the x. So if I pull out one little fin, let's say on this side, it's going to mirror it on this side and it's going to mirror both on both sides on that side. I don't know. Let's <laughs> let's give it a try. 
Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just reading comments here. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, so let's add. I'm gonna do the the plugin again. So I'm gonna this auto mirror plugin is actually really nice. If you go to the Blender plugins and you just search for auto mirror. Uh, this is just really uh, like a quicker way to enable mirroring on a on a mesh. So I'm gonna select X and Y. Oh, let's see, you can only do one year. That's not nice. So it looks like we'll have to do the old way. So I'm gonna go add modifier uh, mirror. But now I want to mirror. I don't know if it's gonna work because I'll have to. No, it's not gonna work because I need to delete half of my model unless mm. <laughs> I'm gonna try something quick so I'm gonna just delete that mirror so I'm gonna go this way again and I'm gonna do X auto mirror and then I'm gonna do Y auto mirror uh -uh, I don't think it's gonna work you see uh, it's already doing something strange why is it doing that see it's mirroring it now like across all the axes or both x and x and y um technically this will work like if i select this face and i extrude it out you'll see there it's going to extrude it on all the sides but i don't know what it's doing at the bottom maybe i must just enable clipping is on um if we let me just switch off the subdivision surface yeah you see that actually works it's probably something to do with the with the clipping that's not working so yeah not sure what i'm gonna do there um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see if i add another loop cut and i just pull this down can probably do something like that and then later on just uh, when i uh, apply the mirror or both of these mirrors i can then just merge these vertices i think that might work um yeah let's let's see if it doesn't work we've got a backup of that other thing so i'm gonna hmm i'm gonna delete this face oh i'm gonna delete all these faces sorry i should have just undid that but i did some other things in between so that was a bit stupid um and then i'm just gonna bridge or just fill that again so switch on subdivision so maybe um <laughs> so they're from the bottom right from the bottom all the way maybe from there to around from there to there, maybe something like that. So I'm gonna extrude that straight out and then give them a little curve at the top. So pull them out like so, maybe not too far. And then I'm gonna take these four vertices like so, and I'm gonna just pull them down. So GZ and then pull them down. So they've got a bit of a aerodynamic uh, curve and then obviously we can s uh, I wonder if we can smooth that out a bit um, so we can take these and then just GG to slide them up to create a bit of a sharper edge there and at the bottom as well so I'm gonna add another loop cut and then just pull them down hmm, maybe Maybe just like this. Cool, so we've got our four little fins. And, um, hmm. Should we do another backup maybe? I'm just gonna duplicate this out again, move it up and hide it. Just press H, H on the keyboard to hide. Alright, 
So what are we doing? Um, see, it's got this little edge going around this thing now. But let me just see if that's a subdivision surface. That's oh, that's the wrong one. Subdivision surface that's causing that. Yeah, maybe a combination with both the mirror, the mirrors that we have on here, and the subdivision. So I'm gonna apply both these mirrors. So let's apply the first one, apply the second one, and let's have a look. Yeah, that kinda, that kinda fixed it. We've got some weird stuff going on here. Um, but we can probably fix it with a loop cut can always fix it with a loop cut so if you just add a loop cut and you just pull this down uh, maybe one little bit of a curve something like that all right I think it's time to add some um, some engines so obviously this whole thing is still just a shell um, so in blender when you using or when you modeling with like like this uh, you create this this kind of shell and what you want to do is you want to add a solidify I think it's called solidify a solidify uh, modifier and that will give it like thickness so I think we need to do that because we need some some thickness here um, yeah we just need something that we can start adding those engines in so let's try that so I'm gonna save because this subdivision, I'm gonna maybe switch this to one for the viewport. So it's just a little bit less geometry to work with. And then we're gonna go add modifier and I'm gonna do a solidify that one right there. So solidify can either go inwards or you can go out. Sorry, I forgot to change the camera back. So now we're back in Blender, yeah. So, you can either go inwards or out so this is the solidify modifier that I added so you basically just go to add modifier and then solidify that one right there so home under solidify you'll see the thickness so you can either go that way or you can go the opposite way like the inside so maybe hmm, what's happening there so obviously we need to be very careful when doing this because you don't want your faces and your vertices and your stuff to overlap. So maybe we should go outwards and not inwards because then you get some weird stuff. So I'm going to go out. Um, obviously if we did this in scale, we could have made it like exactly the same thickness because I know they are busy testing three millimeter thickness on the SpaceX starship which is pretty insane very 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 thin um, but yeah so I'm just gonna do like a 0 0.03 meters that's probably uh, yeah solidify is a game changer always always nice nice to use it um, yeah so I'm gonna move outwards 0 0.03 what's that three centimeter three millimeters probably like 0 0.003 I don't know let's see 0 point whoops uh, 0 0.003 yeah that's super thin maybe I don't know 0 0.03 that f I think that looks like a a decent thickness for this thing let's save that and uh, I think it's time to try and add the engines so let's jump back into Safari and let's look at this look at this thing these reference images I need to yeah, that's a cool photo um, so I need to figure out just kind of where to place them yeah, so here you can see. So this one's got one, two, three small ones in the center and then three bigger ones around it. <coughs> um, hmm. So we can do that. 
there you can see that's the kind of shape of that engine Oh, Nico on El Capitan. Um, yeah, what you can do is you can maybe download an older version. Uh, look for version 2.8 maybe. Um, either 2.8 or 2.81. That might work. I'm on the latest version, Big Sur. So, but it, it should definitely work because I've been using Blender. I was actually using it on um, Mojave for before I upgraded to Big Sur. So I'm sure if you find version 2.8, that should work fine. So I think there's like a link where you can go. Uh, let me show you quickly. If you go to blender.org and you go to download here at the top, I think. Um, and then you can go to, oh well, yeah, you can download the long term support version. Uh, so you can just go in here and other versions and you can um, I'll just click here. Yeah, so here you can find the, they call it long term support or something. So Windows, Mac. Um, yeah, here you go. 283.12. That should work. If that doesn't work, you go to download and then previous versions. And you'll find all the previous versions somewhere here. Yeah, so you go to download. There we go. Sure. Here you can see, you can go back all the way to Blender 1.0. It oh, doesn't show you the actual date. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So you can go all the way back and then all the way to the latest one. <coughs> so, sorry, got a bit sidetracked there. So, let's do the engines. All right, engine time. No problem. Blender, blender. Okay, we're back on the right cam, yeah. So, I think let's hide our Starship by pressing H. And let's add our first engine. So I'm gonna do a, I can probably do a cone. Easy, done. <laughs> And then we can take this uh, bottom face and just inset that, uh, like so. And then you can extrude it, but that's gonna do some weird things. And then obviously we can just scale it down. So you can scale it down, scale it down, scale it down. So we have something like that. We're obviously not gonna see the top, so I'm not really gonna worry about that too much. Uh, let's just see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oops, I just need to hide those two and hide my reference image. So this is a bit huge. So let's scale it down. So I need to, I'm just going to fake this. I'm going to create three around and see how that works. Should we do a circle array for this? I think we need to. Um, yeah, I think we need to. So I'm just gonna slide it up, so GY, like so. Now this array is probably gonna freak out. Every time I do a circle array, <laughs> then there's some issues with it. Um, this is just one of those things that, yeah, you have to kind of do it over and over to kind of get the hang of it. But let's try. I smoke too much. Okay. So we're on the right screen, eh? Yeah. Sorry, I need to double check this thing every time. I'm actually gonna get myself one of the, um, what's it called, the Elgato Stream Decks. Currently I'm using this iPad to switch scenes. And the crap thing, because um, this app is actually made by Streamlabs, the software that I'm using to stream, 
and they released a new version of this app and it's not free anymore like this version you've got a free version and then you've got a paid version where you can customize uh the buttons more and add like different types of buttons and yeah they brought out the latest version not free anymore no free version so if i upgrade or if i update this app i can't use it anymore which is a bit stupid i think they they're a bit greedy i think so yeah okay let's do this so i'm gonna add a an empty in the center so shift a to get this menu and then empty and i'm just gonna add a plain axis so we have this axis empty here in the center and we're going to use that to rotate or to array our engine around it um yeah so let's do that any requests for my background lights which color you guys want to see i can change that blue uh, but you can't really see it on this let me show you guys quickly you can't really see it on this on this view like if i go to this view and then i can go in here and i can change the colors if we want like a pink or a red a red room or a yellow orangey orangey yellow green it's a bit dull and then kind of back to blue and then all the way back to blue or we can just go white and then white bright no that's way too bright let's bring that down so maybe let's go uh, like a magenta i don't know like so for now yeah that looks all right roy let's do roy like so yeah that's pretty cool uh <laughs> red light district here we go okay so let's do this freaking array so first of all i need to change the pivot of this engine because currently the pivot is in the center of that object and i need to place that pivot in the center of the where i want to rotate around so let's do that so i'm gonna because i've got this 3d cursor right there in the middle if your 3d cursor is not in the center you can center it by pressing shift s and then you just choose cursor to world origin and that's gonna put your 3d cursor right there in the center um, and now i can go right click on this engine and say set origin to 3d cursor so now that object's origin is right in the middle so if i rotate this now you'll see it's going to rotate nicely around it which is pretty cool okay so we're going to add an array and then we're going to do an object offset so i'm not going to do a relative offset i want to do an object offset and then for the object i'm going to select this uh empty so you just click on this little picker and we're going to choose the array oh something is happening here that's pretty weird you see that so i'm going to explain to you guys now what's happening here so it's kind of <laughs> it's going bigger and bigger and bigger like if i increase the array, and the reason for this is i did not apply the scale of my first engine because i created the cone and then i scaled it down i didn't apply that scale so it's not a one if i select this object and i look at the object properties you'll see oops that's the starship you'll see it's 0 0.38 and then it will actually increase the size every time you array it so that's that's the problem here so i'm going to delete this array first and then just you click on this object and then you go to object apply and you can apply all transforms but you can also just do scale because that's the kind of the only thing that matters here so scale so now if i select this and i go to the object properties you'll see that the scale is now back to one 
or if I press N um, and click on item, you'll see um, scale is one. Right. So let's save. Let's add that array again. So a little wrench array. And we don't want to do a relative. We want to do an object offset. So I'm going to tick that. And then the little eyedropper to select our empty. Like so. And uh, we want three. And now all you do is you select your empty and you rotate it. So if I rotate around the Z -ax axis, so it's R and Z, I can now rotate it. So now we need to work out like how far do we need to rotate this. And it's pretty simple to do. Like here you, you can see the, the degrees that I'm rotating. So currently it's 106. So I think we just take 360 and then divide by three because we've got three engines and that's 120. That's the cool thing about Blender. You can actually input like little math um, math thingies. <laughs> Yeah, in, in all the slots where you can enter a number, you can do plus, uh, multiply, divide, whatever. So you don't, don't really need to use a calculator, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we've got that array that's looking pretty cool, actually. Maybe we should add the, the other engines as well. Let's go back to that Safari, that um, reference image. And we look at, where was that? Oh, this is such a cool photo. This is amazing. So uh, is, here we go, this one. So it's got the three smaller ones in the center and then three bigger ones around it. So I think let's, let's do that, yeah. So let's go back to Blender, Blender wide. If I forget to change the camera, please just shout in the chat. Camera or Blender or something, just, just do something. Cool, we had over 111 viewers in total so far, which is pretty cool. Five people currently watching. So, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply uh, the array, because we, we're happy with the array, it's looking cool, it's perfect, so I'm going to apply it. And for this, I'm not going to make a copy, because it's really easy to do. So, I'm just going to click on the drop down, apply that, and now, I can probably just scale them out. Or scale them in so if we scale them in uh, let's duplicate this and then scale inwards and then this one I'm just gonna scale outwards because uh, this is now one object so yeah you can see that it's, it's one object so I think my scale is a little bit off because if I want to make these middle three fit, they're going to be super tiny. And uh, that's not really going to work. So we need to scale these three down. But I need to scale them hmm, individually. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see how I'm going to do that. Um, hmm. <laughs> All right, so I don't know. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select all the linked faces. So you just press L on your keyboard and it will select all the linked linked faces. And then I'm going to place my... Let me just see. Yeah, I can scale it just like so, just that one piece. So I'm going to scale this one by... What, like 0 0.7? 0 0.7 might be a little bit too small again but anyway so this one l to select all the connected faces scale 0 0.7 and then this one l to select all scale 0 0.7 yeah that might actually work because i'm going to scale it out a little bit more so i'm just going to scale it out so it's kind of on the edge and then we can scale these ones out 
and I just want to rotate them as well. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Uh, 60. That's probably the perfect number. Let's see. Yeah. So maybe something like like that. That looks almost pretty pretty cool. Um, I wonder. <laughs> so if you want to isolate something in Blender, uh, you select all the all the objects that you want to isolate and then you press shift H and uh, I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna select all of these top uh, top vertices like so and I'm just gonna pull them up so just G and Z just so that they go a little bit higher into the uh, whoops I think I must probably just rename this one Starship, remember to rename your meshes. Always a good thing. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I think let's add some uh, materials. Yeah, I was actually thinking to build like a little, um, little platform, but we need reference images for that. Uh, we can maybe do one. Um, nah, that's fine. Let's just focus on the starship. So first of all, I'm gonna add a new material. Let's add some nice chrome material. I'm just gonna go into the material preview. Um, base color, I'm gonna leave white, 100% white. Metallic all the way, and then roughness all the way down. And then we get something like that. And that looks pretty ugly because it's low poly. But if we right click and go shade smooth, then you'll see it's gonna be nice and like a mirror. It's probably way too much. So I'm gonna put the roughness at like 0.1 maybe. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. So I just wanna look at this reference image again. So I want to add, you see, if you look at this picture, you can see the, the top section. Ah, this is a nice picture. So the one side is kind of uh, stainless steel or chrome. And the other side has got this, like, a, I think, oh yeah, that's where all the heat tiles are going to go. So the heat tiles are this black, um, it looks like, what is the word? Graphite? Is it graphite? Um, yeah, so the one side is, is black. And even the underside of the fins as well. So we'll probably have to do that. Yeah. Let's do it. So I'm going to select everything on the one side. So the easiest way is probably just to view it from the side. Um, and then go into or activate uh, x-ray mode and then we're gonna select all of them all of the all of the faces on the one side so three to face select and then let's just see if I got that uh, oh no so What is happening here? I think I must apply this solidify. Yeah. Mm. Let's apply this solidify modifier. Apply. Yeah, that's better. So we've got the edges. What's happening here? I just want to look at the orientation of these faces. So if you click this drop down here at the top, you can go to um, face orientation. And that's going to show you, if you see anything red, you'll know that your your normals are flipped. So blue is good. Blue is good. 
Um, okay, so I think an easier way is just to view it from this side and then just switch off X-Ray and just select everything because that should select everything we can see. And I think that's pretty good. A nice little tip when you do very difficult face selections, you can actually save, oh yeah, we just need to select these ones now manually. Uh, just all of that. All of that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All of that. All of that. All of that. And then all of this on this side. Hopefully we're selecting everything because we, uh, wait, if I just switch off that subdivision surface. Yeah, so now we've got everything selected and let's say you wanna um, save this selection, um, which is, oh shit, black to be blender, thank you guys, thank you guys. See, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's happening now. Okay, we're back. <laughs> donkey, donkey, donkey. And let me know if you guys can see the the blender screen. Yeah, we're back. All right, so all I did was I basically viewed it from the one side, like so, and then I just dragged the box with X-ray switched off, so it selects everything on the one side. <laughs> And uh, then we can just select those faces and these faces as well. So basically we've got the, the one side selected like so. All happy days. And okay, I'm gonna switch on subdivision surfaces again. So yeah, what I was saying is when you do like a selection, we're definitely on the right screen now, yeah. So if you want to do a, if you're doing a difficult selection and you want to save that selection so you can kind of easy come back to it or reselect those faces, really easy to, to do. So you first select your faces and then you go to this little, little green triangle. That's the object data properties. So if you click on that, you'll see your vertex groups and shape keys. So under vertex groups, this is where you can, where you can set up like where you can save your selection sets so I can just click the little plus and I can give it a name if I want to uh, let's just call this uh, starship one side like that and then with those faces selected you just click assign so assign 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 and now if I deselect everything I can just go back to that little icon, select my group that I want to select, and then click select. And there you go. Kind of just saves it as a uh, selection set, which is pretty nice. So now we can go into materials again. And I'm just going to rename this material to, what are we going to call this? Uh, stainless steel. Righty right. And next I want to add a new material. So this is gonna be the the heat tiles. I'm probably just gonna make this black for now, but maybe we'll get a texture. We'll see. So heat tiles, I'm gonna assign it to that selection. So I've got it selected and click assign. Let's go back into material preview. And I'm gonna change this just to a dark dark almost black and then maybe I'm gonna keep metallic all the way down because it's quite a it looks like a very matte um, type of material that they use and uh, roughness also I'm gonna set the roughness pretty high like point point eight um, let's have a look uh, yeah something like that what's going on here at the top So we missed some faces right here. So let's just fix this quickly. So I'm gonna switch off. I don't really like working uh, with the subdivision surface turned on, I don't know. Obviously with this it looks nice and smooth, but I don't really like uh, to, to work like this. I usually switch it off and kinda just check every now and then if, if we're still on track. So yeah, we missed some faces. So 
What we can do now is we can go back to the selection set and say select. And then I just add these faces that I missed. So if we press W, we'll get this little nice painty paintbrush. So we can just do that. And then just paint them in like so. I think that's everything we missed. And now I can just go back to this selection set and then just click assign again. Doot, 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 doot. So now if I just press W again to go back to box selection. And now if I press select, it should select all of those faces. Cool, so let's go back to material preview and uh, let's just reassign the E tiles to that. So now we've got everything to the top all the way I would really like to add a nice texture to it to the side but maybe we'll do so in a couple of minutes any other ideas let me know in the chat ideas questions music whatever anything let me know um dun 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 I need some water Okay it's time for a background color change What color what color should I make it Let's see if anyone's still listening. UV map it with a logo. I can probably do that. Um, we can have a look now and see how the how the UVs are actually looking. Um, yeah, good idea maybe. Oh yeah, with the stars, oh, the the SpaceX logo. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go back to Safari while you guys decide on the background color. So let's look at Safari quickly. Hopefully I'm going to remember to come back. I just want to see where they put that logo. Or I think maybe let's just put it on the side and see, see what happens. Uh, yeah. Grun. I'm going to go like a little bit of darker green because, um, yeah, the bright green is just, it feels weird. I don't even know if it is green now. Let's have a look. Main chat. Yeah, it's a bit green. It's more like, mm, yeah, like that's, that's the brightest the green can go. Um, it's weird. The green is like not that bright for some, for some reason. It can do like a... Yeah, like a more like a blue green. What do you call that? Turquoise. I don't know. I'm gonna put it in the just in between green and blue. That's a green. There you go. Happy days. Okay, are we gonna try the logo? Blender, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Save. I want to see all your, all the people in the chat, um, all the starships after this, eh? Martian green, yeah, exactly. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, logo time. So let's look at the UVs. Um, obviously, I'm going to switch off the subdivision surface. Yeah, at E. What? Is it off? Uh, yeah, it is off. That's on. Yeah, I wanted to say it looked a little strange. But yeah, we're going to switch it off. And I'm going to shade flat. And let's have a look at the, the UVs. So right at the top, I'm going to go to UV editing. And just want to make sure we're on the right screen. Yes, we're on the right screen. Cool. Um, 
UVs, UVs, UVs. This thing is probably going to be a nightmare to, to UV unwrap. Maybe not, but let's see. So if I select all of this and I just switch on this little sync button on this side. Um, okay, there's no UV, so I'm going to right click UV unwrap. We can try a normal unwrap first, but that's probably just, yeah, that doesn't work at all. So I'm going to do a smart UV project. That's pretty interesting. It doesn't look too bad, but I'm sure there's some some weird things. Yeah, this is not too bad for automatic UV unwrap. It's not perfect, obviously, but I think to add a logo, that maybe should work. Let's have a look. What are these faces right there? So you can select all the faces on this side, and it's going to show you on the model which faces we're looking at. So maybe if we place the logo just kind of center straight up maybe on the on the heat side it doesn't matter let's give it a try i haven't done a log like logo placement in quite a while so let me show you guys maybe i will get it right so um okay so first of all we need uh oh, this is going to be interesting because this is going to include or this is going to need some node node workings so it's not too crazy but it's, it's i'm probably going to struggle with it now so we're going to the shading view right there the top shading and then you get your your um your shading nodes yeah that unwrap is quite intense um usually you don't do like auto unwrapping but for this is fine but you'll probably want to add some seams. You can go into uh, edge select mode and you can select like edges like that, like so. And you can right click on them and say mark a seam. And then it will kind of use that to break the seam, like where it's going to cut that to flap it open to make it flat. So, but yeah, for I think this will, this will be fine for just adding a logo. So I'm not too worried about that. Let's just save. Uh, but yeah, the UV unwrapping, that's like a, a skill on its own to, to UV unwrap. Um, yeah, it can get crazy sometimes. I was struggling today uh, for work. I was doing a, a can. Uh, Martin actually knows about the can. And I had to unwrap the, the top, you know, like a drinking can? Like at the top, it's got like a little indent. And I had to... I don't know, I was struggling so hard with that little, like the little lip at the top of the can. Um, it drove me insane. But, um, <clears throat> and the thing is, when you do it for work, with the deadlines, is always crazy. So it's like rushing, rushing, rushing. And, uh, yeah, just breaks my brain. Yeah, Niku, um, I see you talking about Houdini there in the chat. Houdini is next level. Like, <clears throat> I don't really have a problem with nodes because I used to use PF Track quite a lot uh, to do 3D tracking. And with PF Track, you use nodes only. <coughs> Sorry. And yeah, it works really well because you can like go back and go down and you can connect your nodes. So I don't really, I don't hate nodes. They can just be a little bit confusing. But anyway, so we've got our UV, our UV map. So I'm going to go to shading, and uh, let's see what we're going to do. So materials. So I need to add a new material that we're going to. Ha! Huh, this is going to be interesting. I haven't done this in a while. So if it doesn't work, please bear with me. Uh, so I'm going to create a new material, and we're going to call this space X logo. Let's see what happens. So now this is our SpaceX logo um, shader and this is the material output. So we want to, instead of using a base color, we want to use an image texture. So I'm going to add a new uh, image texture. So you just search. You also just use Shift A to bring up this little create menu. Shift A, same as creating normal meshes. We on the right screen? Yes, we are. Uh, so I'm going to go search and then just type in 
image and then we select image texture so that's our image texture and i'm going to connect that to color like so and then very importantly because we have um uv unwrapped this basically so it's got uv coordinates we need to add a texture coordinate and then we also need to add a mapping node so with this you can basically tell this material that it should use the uv coordinates so you can see here we've got uv normal generated all those different things so we're telling it we're going to use the uv coordinates plug that into the mapping vector and then this vector will go into the image texture so then with this mapping control you can change the location of your texture the rotation also the scale which is cool so you can scale it rotate it and do all kinds of things with it so now we need to add this um, I actually did download it earlier because I was I've got it on the thumbnail so and there is my SpaceX logo so I'm just loading it in there you can see it says SpaceX logo and now the interesting part because now we need to mix it on <laughs> I don't know this is probably not gonna work well probably won't remember how to do it um, but yeah let's let's see what happens so I'm gonna put it on the black side or the back side the black side the heat side um, so I'm gonna take all those ones wait from there mm -mm, all the way to from there to there that middle section and I'm gonna go to materials and I'm gonna apply this material that we're busy with I'm gonna apply that onto those faces it's probably not gonna work Let's just save and assign okay so now we've got it on there you can't see anything yet uh, so what I want to do I'm gonna select all those faces and I'm gonna go into the UV editing and now what do we have here okay so I'm gonna just re unwrap those faces so just right click unwrap and then we get like a nice something like this um, yeah this is now gonna I don't want any of these other faces to be on this logo and this I want to rotate 90 degrees bring it in and scale it like that let's see if we can actually see anything yet no we can't So scale them out. So that's the one side. Uh, yeah, this is not the right orientation. It's basic. So the S should start at the bottom. So let's just rotate this 90 degrees, scale in the Y, and then scale in the X. Scale in the X. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got those faces. So this face on this side. So that's the bottom. Why can't I see anything here? Okay, I think I am missing something. Let's see if we change this blend mode to alpha blend. Huh, can't see anything yet. Uh, shadow mode, that's fine. Uh, 
um, let's go back to shading. Let's see what's happening here. So we've got the UV coordinates. We've got the mapping. Then we've got our logo, and that goes there. And we did apply it to that. Um, <laughs> Maybe I must unwrap it just from this view. So I'm gonna view it from the from the front and just right click and say project from view. And then you get something like that. I'm just gonna place it kinda over the E. See, it's got something to do because this logo is black and it's on a transparent, it's a transparent uh, PNG. So there's something that I need to do. Um, it's easy if it's, not a, uh, if it's not a PNG or if it's not transparent, then it's pretty easy. But not that easy when it's, when I haven't done this in a while and I need to do it again. Okay, shading. So. Yo, 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 yo. Um, we need to combine this somehow. Mm, I'm probably just missing something really stupid. Alpha blend, alpha clip. Nope. Alpha hashed. Nope. Alpha blend. Let's leave it on alpha blend for now. Let's just switch. Now that view, we don't have any lights. Um, dun 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 dun. So I'm sure we need some sort of mix alpha thing here. So let's add a mix node. Uh. <laughs> no, no, Martin, you're gonna get all this. Trust me, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting but i'm just being stupid now so so i'm gonna try mix um mix rgb no mix rgb is not gonna work so i'm gonna do mix shader i'm missing something here now i i can't remember how to do this so you've got your two shaders that you can mix here this is probably not the right way to do it but let's see if it gives us anything so now it tells us something is missing. Um, yeah, you know what? This shader must not you see that red line. That means problem. So I think it must come after the shader. So color to that, and then this shader to shader, and then that goes out to the material. Okay, we have black. And if I pull it the other way, we have the the original texture, I think. <laughs> so this must probably be, be black. I'm just going to put it somewhere in the middle. And let's just change these different alpha clip or alpha hash. Nope. Alpha blend. Mm, let's go back to our UV editing. See, if this was a different color, ah, I think it would have shown up. Because I'm definitely missing something here. Um, RGB, maybe... Maybe let's try and change the color from... Let's try and invert it. So, I'm going to look for the invert node <laughs> now we just have white okay <laughs> this is not good uh, back face culling that's not gonna work alpha blend opaque nothing there uh, yeah I think I need to make the the logo white. That's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to invert it, but obviously it's not working because I'm missing something. I'm missing something. It's always like that when someone's watching you work, um, there's just some things that you just get stuck on and you can't figure it out. And if you're doing it alone, you're like, eh, it works. <laughs> always like that. Um, show back face, back face culling, 
Shadow maybe, Alpha Club, Alpha Ash, no, none, Opaque. I'm sure it must be Alpha Blend. I know it must be Alpha Blend when you're using, uh, when you're working with these things. Maybe I must put that on top. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. Black, white, middle, no. And this is the the invert factor. Ah, that's not working. Um, shader. Hmm. It's a bit of, of a problem. Let's just uh, apply our stainless steel to these engines as well. So I'm going to apply it to that one as well. Stainless steel. Oh, there we go. Let's change this music. It's a bit, it's a bit heavy. Save. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why I'm struggling with this material so much. I can probably look it up, but that's going to be boring and uh, yeah, not really what I want to do. If anyone in the comments have any ideas why my texture is not working, please let me know. Uh, SpaceX logo. So we've got our... I'm just going to disconnect this mapping node quickly and see what we get. So we can't see anything yet. And it's definitely, if we select these faces, we can definitely see it's over the E. So we should be able to see see the E. Because, you see there, those faces are definitely on it. So, we should see it. We should see something. Um, color and alpha. Color. Yeah, see, color is just black. Alpha. Okay, this is just showing the alpha channel now. I don't think it's going to change anything with the actual... Uh, with the actual texture. So, let's just reconnect these again. And still nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing there. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me just select these once again. And I'm gonna assign. He's definitely assigned. So that's not the problem. And yeah, it's not showing up. Um point texture and I don't think it's gonna help if we move it around see if it comes into view nope no it's broken or oh, my brain is just broken uh, he tells what if I mm. he tells space Black, white, shader. Uh, maybe I must put like a. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna try and mix this. So you create a transparent. Wait, my brain just. It's either translucent or transparent. I think it's transparent. So you add a transparent. Um, Transparent node. It's basically a transparent shader. Okay, wait. Okay. <laughs> Delete the invert. Connect that to our shader again. So we have our shader. And then I'm going to mix it. So I'm going to mix it with a transparent shader. So I'm going to place that one underneath. And now we see the stainless steel again. Okay. So if we swap this around, let me just see. So that's going to take us from the transparent. So that's 100% transparent. And if we slide it to the other side, it should show us the our other shader, which it's, it's not working. So maybe if we swap them around, if I put this one bottom and that one top, and then we play with this. Also not. 
Hmm. Opaque. Can't see any lettering there. Nah. Noob. Alpha clip. Uh, uh, any ideas? Nothing yet. Uh, okay. So. Okay, so that's definitely not working. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the logo because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I've honestly done this before, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just haven't done this in in a while to add like a transparent uh, logo. Maybe we should just um, download a non-transparent logo and just see if we can do that rather. But then, yeah, it's not it's re not really gonna work because it's gonna have the bag if it's a, if it's like a white background it's gonna have a white background if it's gonna or if it's a black background it's gonna have a black background and this is not perfectly black so it's not gonna look great but i will definitely figure out how to do that um for the next stream and then we can add logos and things so i'm just gonna shade smooth again i don't know there's probably something really stupid that i'm missing um, but I just cannot think right now why it's not working. So we've got our engines, we've got our stainless steel on the one side, and we've got that on the other side, the heat tiles. It would be nice if we can get like a texture of that, that top area. Um, but yeah, that's not going to be a easy thing I think to find. I'm just going to switch on subdivision surface again. Maybe let's do a little render. So let's go into, wait, before we go into render view, I'm just going to add a plane so we have something. Are we going to create like a little Mars scene? Yeah, let's do that. So with this plane, I'm going to go into edit mode and then just subdivide it a few times. So subdivide and subdivide and subdivide and subdivide and subdivide and subdivide like that and then what we can do is we can go into vertex selection and then press w to get this little paint paintbrush selection um, and then you just kind of select a few random points like so and then you switch on proportional editing o and then GZ and, uh, and then you press alt plus to increase the the effect area and then you can kind of create these weird and wonderful I'm gonna place this on random GZ and then you get these nice little interesting little mountains so maybe like that Um, and then we need a nice HDRI, like a Martian HDRI. Okay, so let's go into Safari. Bam. And then we're going to go to HDRI Haven. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. Pretty cool site to find really, really cool uh, HDRIs. So HDRIs, and let's look for outdoor now something that's very marsy uh, i'm on the right screen eh? yeah something red something desert that mm, too many trees so let's see what we have and this is all free and you can use it in any of your work Mm, there's some some nice ones here. Uh, let's see if we have like a desert or something. Uh, okay, here we go on the side. Let's look at. Uh, 
Yeah, HDRI is always fun, always fun. Could probably use something like this for, oh, this is pretty nice. But let's see, there's maybe something that's also can work. I want a Mars HDRI. I'm sure you can f actually find a real Mars HDRI nowadays with all the rovers like taking high resolution photos. That should be pretty cool, but um, yeah, for now I'm just gonna use like a desert. Maybe, maybe this one is good. It's kind of red. Yeah, that's Mars right there. So I'm just gonna download the 4K. Mm, yeah, let's download the 4K. And I'm just gonna place that somewhere. <coughs> uh, sorry, I'm just saving it quickly into my HDRI folder. And I'm gonna call it M Mars. All right, save, done. Everyone's still alive. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Blender, bam. Let's see how I remember it this time. Can you believe it? So we're gonna save, and uh, in render view, so we're gonna go to render view. So by default, you've got this gray color as your HDRI basically. So we're gonna go to this little uh, world icon, the red little planet. And then we're gonna click on next to color on that dot and we're gonna select uh, environment texture. And that's gonna give us access to load an HDRI. So I'm just gonna browse to that HDRI quickly. Mars, 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 there we go, open. So now we've got our Mars, Marsy HDRI, and that's kind of giving us the, the reflection. So if you're looking at, look at the Starship, you can kind of see the nice reflection there. And then obviously we need to give this thing a texture. Um, let's see if I can find one quickly. Let's go back to Safari. Safari, bam. So I'm looking for a Mars texture. Jeez, yeah, you can actually download the, the full planet, the, the full texture of the of Mars. But I just want a little piece, like a little section. A little bigger than that. 900 by... Yeah, I'll probably need something really high resolution, but there's a 2K... Yeah, let's download the 2K one. So I'm going to save this one. Save it into my... Uh, materials folder so let's call this uh, this is um, it's like a ground texture ground texture and I'm just gonna call it Mars all right so back to blender there we go and uh, yeah so it's to apply a a texture so obviously if we look at the UV editing for this world I'm just going to switch off uh, proportional editing so if I select all those faces you can see this is perfectly UV mapped because we started off with a, a rectangle and then we just subdivided it uh, so that's all good and um, now we want to apply that texture. So really easy. I'm going to select that plane, go to t uh, materials, click on new. Let's call it Mars. And then next to base color, we're just going to click there and go to image texture and then open. And then I'm going to browse to that folder quickly. Uh, wait. And I saved it under ground textures open. All right, so now we've got that applied. You can see that actually applied it 
Uh, it's obviously stretched now because I like extruded or not. Ex yeah, I I moved those vertices up quite far, so it's gonna stretch them. So not to worry, not to worry about it. Maybe we can scale this thing up even further, make it a bit flatter. So there, I just scaled it, and then I pressed Shift Z. So it scales it in X and Y, but not in Z, which is pretty, pretty handy to use. Um, how long have we been streaming? Almost two hours. Quarter past twelve. Hello, Saturday. So let's just zoom in here again. Yeah, you see, this texture is really low uh, resolution for this, for this this area, but. What we can do, we can actually repeat it. So if we go to the the UVs of this whole thing, what you can do, let's just see if this will work. So I'm gonna go into face mode, select all the faces, and then you can scale this up and you can see that it's gonna start it's gonna start tiling that texture over and over and over. So if I scale it up, it's probably not gonna tile very well but at least it's going to give us a higher resolution if we kind of close by. So you can see if I scale it all the way down again, kind of get this horrible looking low quality texture, scale it up, and then it kind of looks better. Not amazing, but better. So obviously we need to change the... Um, it shouldn't like reflect the light like this. So I'm going to set the specular to zero because it's not reflecting any light because it's sand and dust. Time for a smoky smoke. Oh, the tiling. Okay. So basically if you go into your UV editing tab, okay, and you go into edit mode and you select all the faces. So I'm in face select mode. Press A to select all the faces. Uh, you can see then in the center. So let me just scale this down again, show you. So I'm gonna scale this down on the UV side, on the left hand side. So we're zooming here. So this area, this white area, that's basically our UV space. I know there's a word for it, but it's the that's the UV space where your your texture or your material is gonna live in. Um, so you can make it really small, then it's only using that little section of your texture. But if you increase it, so if you look at the, if you zoom in, you'll see the quality is horrible. Because it's only using like a tiny section of your texture and it's stretching it over this, this whole plane. Which is going to give you uh, low quality texture. So just select that all again with A. And if you scale it up and you go outside the bounds then it's going to start automatically to tile it. You can actually preview it if you go to UV. I know there's a way to see that. Uh, let's see. Show, align, stitch. There's definitely a way. Display stretched. Uh, I saw it the other day. You can go to, whoops, maybe image. Uh, invert view it's not needed that you do this it's just a nice way to um, to view it Cinema 40 fan no yeah Cinema 40 is not bad I must say Cinema 40 is great Cinema 40 is amazing but yeah Blender is free um, Cinema 40 is damn expensive so but yeah, it's not 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 bad software. Cinema 40 is great. Um, yeah, I'm not going to worry too much now about showing the. But there's definitely a way to to show it. Snap to pixels, constrain. Ah, da, 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 da. It's somewhere. So all you do is you zoom out and you scale it up, and you scale it up, and you scale it up as far as you want to. Because it's gonna, it's actually looking. You can see it's it's tiling, um, but you don't really realize it because we've got these little mountains. So it's not it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go in there. So let's say we want to make this 
material a bit darker. So what you can do is you can go into the shading nodes again. So yeah, now I'm gonna just do some very easy node explanations here. Um, so this is our Mars image. You can see that it says Mars.png. So that's the, the material that I'm using. And then this is going into our shader where we change all these settings. So basically these settings all sync with these settings on this side of the material. So if I change the, the roughness, you'll see that the roughness is actually moving the slidey on the side is moving as well. So it's all the same. So this is just a different view of this. Um, and now I can go in here and between this texture and our shader, I can type in curves and it's going to give us RGB curves and I can just slot it in there. So now I can literally go in here and I can color correct it. So I can drag this down to make it darker and you can bring that up if you want to give it like more contrast. So the highlights are going to be brighter and the darker areas is going to be darker. So we kind of just give it a like, uh, that's pretty cool. And now we can also go in here into the different um, color channels. So that's everything. And you can go into the red channel so you can boost the red and you can boost it some more. You can see it's getting redder and redder. So maybe redder, maybe something like that. And then you can take some of the green out and maybe some of the blue out as well because you don't want it to be pink. <clears throat> Have you ever made a studio that uses Blender? Yes, Ubisoft. Ubisoft is using Blender. Um, I'm using Blender. I'm working for uh, one of the biggest media companies in the world, um, Accenture Interactive. So more and more studios are actually starting to use Blender now. Um, I know a lot of the big studios are still using Maya. And the only reason they use Maya it's not because Maya can Maya's better. It's because Maya's more customizable. Um, you can write custom scripts for it. But I'm not going to get into that all. Which software is the best? The best software is the software that you are most comfortable with. Um, like in my line of work, where I do visual effects and motion graphics and um, a lot of commercials, we can use any software that we feel comfortable with. Um, so if we get a Maya file from from our head office, I can open it in Maya and I can export a Lembic and um, then I can use it in any other software that I want. Because they don't really care about what process you use to get to the final result. Um, as long as the final result is good, then yeah. And I'm much, I can actually do things quite a bit faster in Blender than doing it in Maya. Um, Maya's workflow is just, I don't know, it feels a bit slow. It's obviously nice for, for big projects, but if you want to do like a really quick thing, Blender is just like one to three and you're done. Um, but yeah, that's each, each to their own, whatever software you feel comfortable in, that's the best software. Um, the one thing I do like about Blender is that you can do 3D tracking in here. I do a lot of uh, 3D tracking, so I used to use a lot of PF track. And now I just use Blender because I can do object tracking and I can do camera tracking in here. Um, I will definitely do a stream one day where I do camera tracking uh, or like object tracking or something. That's just super cool to do. Okay, so we have our Martian surface. Let's go back to normal layout. Uh, now I just want to hide this HDRI in the background because obviously we don't want to see <laughs> we don't want to see that. So an easy way to do that just go to your render settings, the little camera, then go to film, and then just click transparent, and that's going to just make it transparent. It's going to keep the lighting uh, to be exactly the same. Yeah, PF Track is great. Um, PF Track is amazing. One of the best software to do. Uh, camera tracking and obviously object tracking. I used it a lot for object tracking because there's obviously many other different softwares or applications that you can do camera tracking with but object tracking is kind of the trick or the tricky thing and uh, PF track is amazing. 
but the tracker that's built into Blender is actually so much faster. Like you must check the new version. Um, this is version 2. Point, uh, Blender 2.92, and uh, you must check the 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 speed of this tracker. If you like, select probably like if you select 40 different points and you just go track forward, it literally goes like through your timeline done. With PF Track, it will do, if you do like 20 points, it will do one frame, one frame, one frame. Obviously it depends on the size of the trackers and all of that, but Blender's tracker is stupid fast. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's so fast. They're obviously using like different algorithms and I don't know. And it works great. It's it's easy. Then you don't also have to worry about exporting FBX and then into your software. And nope, that the frames and everything is perfect because that's also always a big thing. If you do tracking uh, from PF Track, it's gonna you need to make sure that your your starting frame, your end frame, and all of that is perfect when you import it into your software of choice. So there's always this. Um, something can go wrong between importing and exporting but um, camera tracking better do in Blender and before doing object tracking um, well you can do object tracking in Blender now as well so yeah I I literally don't <laughs> use PF track anymore um, <clears throat> I've got a license that my work is paying for for PF track because it's damn expensive but I don't use it <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, don't use it. I use Blender. Um, I started using Blender only in 2020 when we started lockdown in South Africa last year in, when was it, April, March, April. Uh, I decided I want to learn Blender. And uh, yeah, so I was using PF Track and Maya up, up to then. I used a bit of uh, Cinema 4D as well. I used 3ds Max. I even used Modo for a bit. Modo is great. Uh, they're all great. They're all great. I just, yeah. Maya's interface is horrible. Um, just opening, okay, opening Maya up. If you click on the Maya icon, you probably have to wait like a minute before you can do anything. Um, loading all the scripts, loading all the all those things. Blender is, you click on that icon and it's open and you can start. Done. So yeah, I don't know. It's probably just much lighter. So there we have our, let me just enable admin occlusion, uh, bloom, and screen space reflections. So we have some, some bloom going on there. We need some lights. We need a sun. So let's create a sun. So I'm going to save. I'm going to go new or add. And then I'm going to go light. And I'm going to add. Or maybe we should, instead of the HDRI, I should actually use that new sky texture. Should we try that? So if you go to your world settings, instead of using the HDRI, because it's not really doing much, it's just giving us a bit of reflection, but we can see some trees in there. So. That's not really realistic. I think we can actually just use the the ground texture as the reflections. And um, then I'm going to just shut down this HDRI. And instead of an environment texture, I'm going to change it to sky texture. And uh, then I just want to switch that on quickly so we can see it. So I'm going to take the transparency off from our background. And now, let's just see if we can do something here. Okay, I'm gonna have to switch over to cycles. This might give some um, some problems with the audio because I'm on a Mac and it's gonna use my CPU to render. So if the audio breaks up, please let me know in the chat. Then I'll switch back to, to uh, EV. Ah, oh, so you're from the Ukraine, nice. Yeah, PF Track is and PF Clean. I've, I've never used PF Clean. I know it's like a kind of version of PF Track, but yeah, P anything from Pixel Farm is is expensive, um, really expensive. So yeah, okay. So we've got our sun 
or our sky texture i'm just going to bring this elevation down to like a nice little sunset and maybe bring the strength down to like uh maybe like 0.2 okay let's bring the sun maybe to 40 and then we're going to bring the strength down a bit maybe 0.1 is the audio still okay? Um, if anyone can just let me know in the chat. Because I'm using uh, CPU rendering, I'm just scared that it's maybe messing up my audio. Well, it's just using 20% of the CPU, so it should be okay. We've got a few drop frames, but yeah, just let me know if the audio is freaking out, then I'll, then I'll stop. So, now you can see we've got this shadow which has actually been created by the sky texture that we have in let me just zoom out here and you guys can see the sky texture so you can now do things like dust so i can increase the the dust in the air and i can increase the ozone or decrease there's all interesting things you can do with this oh that's pretty nice like a like a dark let's just zoom back in here so let's see if we can audio still alright cool donkey donkey yellow so I want to make this shadow a little bit softer as you can see the shadow is super harsh it's like it's probably I wonder shadows on Mars because there's no there's no atmosphere or there is an atmosphere, it's just very thin, so you might get a little bit of a softer um, shadow. So I'm going to try and increase the sun size. So the smaller sun size, I think if you make this like 0.1, you'll get a very harsh looking shadow. Very sharp, yeah, that's super sharp. And if I increase this to like 1, yeah, you can see the shadow is a little bit softer. If I increase this to 2, and then it's even going to be a little bit softer than that. Maybe let's make it like five. <laughs> I just realized that. Thank you very much, Martin. It's just, whoops. <gasps> Blender just crashed. Okay, I did save. That's because I'm streaming and doing freaking cycles rendering on a non-GPU. Ah, we did save. Okay, that's nice. We can just um, make our sun bigger again. Uh, let me just make sure that we're back. Yeah, you guys can see Blender again, eh? That's cool. Yeah, I think we need to disable some stuff here because this might get a bit slow. I'm going to put the viewport at like 16 samples and then I'm going to enable denoising. Let's see. Yeah, the denoising in Blender is amazing. Really, really amazing. Okay, so... That is definitely the reason for the crash, was that shadow. Okay, so we've got a bigger sun. So our sun is at five. Sun size is five degrees, whatever that means. Uh, you also have like different types of skies that you can use. So currently we're using Nesita. You can also do Freeham. That's like a different vibe. And you also get different settings for this. And then you also get Osek. I have no idea where these names come from. And then you have Nesita, which is the one we're using. Um, strength, maybe we can bring it down a little bit, 0 0.05. Yeah. Cool, let's do a little render. So I'm going to create a camera. I'm just going to switch back to solid view for now so we can kind of see what's going on much quicker. So I'm going to create a camera. And... Um, now you can see we have a little camera there. I'm just going to move it up. So the cool thing is you can look through the camera. And then if you press N and you go to view here on the side, I can click or enable camera to view. 
and that will allow me to actually move around in my scene and move the camera with me so i can now position this exactly the way i want and i can also go into my camera settings and i can change the length uh, the, the focal length so the lens that i'm using so i want like a super wide angle so i'm going to go with something like 16 millimeter and then just move closer so we have this nice super wide angle maybe let's go 11 and then move closer so we have this bit of a distortion distortion view um, then once you've set your position for the camera just remember to take off this camera to view again because then you can move out of it and it will keep your camera in that area so that's the camera and um, yeah you can just click this camera icon there on the side to go in and out or you can just press zero on the keyboard to go into the thing Alrighty then, so let's look through our camera, I'm going to do a save, hopefully it's not going to crash, and then I'm going to go to render view, and that's kind of the view that we're getting, um, I'm just going to rotate this thing in the, so I want to see the shiny side, so RZ, and then maybe, maybe like that. It feels a little bit too shiny still. Um, what do you guys think? I think it's a little bit too shiny. So I'm going to change the stainless steel. Metallic, I'm going to make 0.9. And I'm going to make the roughness 0.2. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Adaptive sampling, let's just save that again. Right. Okay, should we do a quick render? So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to solid view. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to my render settings. So our render is only gonna have 128 samples adaptive sampling so it kind of changes the the sampling per tile um, and then we've got render denoising so because i don't use oh see optics is actually available but i don't think it's going to work because optics is it's weird like i actually have an external gpu on my on my mac so i've got a a, a, a it's like the old, uh, it's the previous version of the AMD. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's the 5500 50, XT. Um, that I've got in an external uh, external GPU that's connected with Thunderbolt. But the weird thing is Mac don't really support it like fully. It kind of works. Like it will accelerate the viewport and when I use EV it actually works but if I use um, cycles I can't set my GPU even if it's showing up here if I go to my preferences you guys probably won't be able to see preferences but yeah it doesn't show the GPU here and it's got something to do with Apple not supporting OpenGL I think or OpenCL or something but yeah I don't know what's going to happen with the future Macs or the M1 Max because they don't support external GPUs at all. But anyway, let's do a little render. So I'm going to say render image. And I'm just going to zoom out. Okay, this might actually mess up the audio. Let me know if, if it does. Because now it's doing like full-on CPU rendering. And there we go. We have a render. Can you believe it? So yeah, obviously we can still do a lot, a lot of things uh, to make this better. I actually just want to, can you guys, you guys can see the render. Yeah. 
because it's like inside the, the same view. Um, I actually just want to rotate it slightly so we can kind of see the, ba uh, the, the, the tiles. That's what I want to see. So, yeah, I see we, we need that texture really. But I'm going to put it like so. And let's increase the samples just a little bit. <clears throat> so instead of 128, I'm going to do 256 samples. Adaptive sampling, keep that on. And I'm going to set this to NLM because I know that's compatible with uh, CPU rendering. So let's just save that. And let's see, uh, color management. I usually change this to standard because Filmic will give you like a very uh, low contrast -y look. So I'm going to change it to standard. Gives you a little bit more contrast. And then render. Let's see. Hopefully you guys will still be able to hear me. Testing, 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 testing. Well, it's showing it's not dropping frames at this moment. I'm doing 60 frames a second on the display capture, but the, the video that you're seeing here in the corner, this one, is uh, only 20, 25 frames because I... I need to get a better capture card because I'm using this little cheap, um, you probably can see it, this one, yeah, if you look at where I'm pointing right there, there's a little USB device that you convert HDMI to USB, but it's a cheap one, it's a no-name brand, um, no-name brand, and it can only do up to 25 frames per second, but I uh, will probably get the, um, what's it, the Elgato. Elgato one, a lot more expensive, but then you can do up to 4K and you can do 60 frames a second, which is very nice. Cool, we just went over 200 views so far, 208 views in total, which is pretty cool. Any questions? I'm probably gonna end the stream in the next five minutes or so. Because I think we we did something. We created a basic little starship from nothing. And we have a little Mars scene. Um, that black on the horizon doesn't look too great, but you know what? I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Mm. Cool, so what I'm going to do, let me just switch to this main chat. So what I'm going to do, let's smoke a cigarette. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching tonight. Really cool, I really enjoy these live streams actually. It's my second live stream of all time. And um, I'm probably going to do, uh, I want to try and do like two a week. But maybe I'll start off and do one a week and see how that goes. And then maybe if it, if I get a little bit more like more viewers, I will then stream twice a week. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this Blender file and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it or upload it or share it in the Discord server. So if you have Discord, go to the description of this video and uh, click on the Discord link if you want to. And you can join the Discord server there. And, and yeah, I think let's then share discord um like blender project files or any other software it's not just going to be blender but obviously we can share stuff there um and then you guys can then download it and look at it and make some changes and upload it again or render it and yeah just share maybe any ideas that you have but anyways thanks a lot for watching guys i really enjoyed it if you want to you can click on the subscribe button you don't have to but if you really want to it's it will really help me out a lot and even if you just click on the like button just that like button really helps a lot because that kind of tells the algorithm that this video is is okay <laughs> that other people might be able to learn something from it so please if you don't mind just click the like button if you want to you can click the subscribe button um, it's quite weird, like I think 90 something percent of my viewers are non-subscribers. So yeah, if you want to subscribe, that'll be great. You don't have to. 
as always. But thank you for watching. I really enjoyed the stream. And I'm going to try and stream next Friday again. Maybe I'll stream in the week. I'll see what happens. And uh, let me know if you guys have any ideas for streams or upcoming streams. Or if you want to see different software. Or if you want to see me doing something different in Blender. Like maybe, maybe we should do like a camera tracking thing next time. Where I do like actual camera track. And um, yeah, we can do that as well. So I don't know. I'll see. When I have any ideas, I will let you peeps know and we stream it. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.